moves about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. <laughs> Manufacturers of State Express 3-5 Silver King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. Oh, was it my wife? Or some other, Stella? 
my stomach, knew the answer. A ton of live coal, blowing heat to my brain. Barman, give me the same double. Later, at home, I waited for dinner. You didn't come. I was delayed somewhere talking to myself. Uh, leaving dead, sir. I went to visit a friend. Oh, good. You've got a friend. Mary Ford. Deeply done. I'm dry. I'm going to bed. you want to say, Steve? The last job I left was three months ago. Oh. But we're eating, the landlord's not threatening, and uh, you wore a new dress last night. I'll have that coffee now. Thanks. Oh, and my insurance is all paid up. Surprise, no arrears. <laughs> uh, coffee's ice cold. Well, what's the answer, Stella? I... I've borrowed. From whom? Carl Stanley. Why does Carl care? He's your friend. Making secret loans of money to my wife? I wanted the loans. Secret. Why? To, to save your pride. You resent people you're obligated to. Even friends. Now try again, Stella. Why? What is secret? To, to avoid this, this inquisition. Your brooding mistrust of a simple act of kindness. The search for hidden murders where there aren't any. My friend Carl and Stella's lover. I knew the other man now. I went to thank Carl for favors received. Doctor Carl. Into a dwarf with greedy eyes and a cat. Uh, you're dropping in like this. I had a dream about your a dream. Uh, that you were a cat and that you uh, swallowed me. <laughs> <laughs> Can 
you're not laughing. No. I never laugh at uh, symptoms. Oh, but you are laughing behind that cat's smile. There's a laugh going. Steve, you're in a bad way. I didn't come here for a consultation, Doctor. You came to attack me? Why? Being careless about money. So you know about the loans? I found out about them. You've been keeping me alive for months. You're my friend. So you own me and Stella. We're in pawn to you. You've always put things badly, Steve. And what's the analysis for that? Uh, since you ask, insecurity. You can't accept kindnesses for what they are. Your anxieties into Now, I also owe you a fee. I'm not your physician, Steve. Nor could I be. I'm your friend. My wife's friend. Your friend. We were together once, and it was good. Steve, Steve, let's go back to those days. Where, where were we before, Carl? Mountain climbing. A log fire and a pipe full of talk before we turned in. Ah, remember Devil's Peak. Oh, what a climb. Let's go back to it, Steve. You still own that mountain cabin? Just as we left it. And the season is officially open. Let's go back to it, Steve. All right. Let's go back to it, Carl. We went back to it. It was open season, officially, for hunting deer. And unofficially, on that. <laughs> An accidental fall with a push from behind to help, then 4,000 feet to smash against the boat. For an accidental rifle bullet intended for a deer. Hello, Steve! Hello! Steve! Where are you? Hello, here! Oh, oh, Steve, did I shoot anything? My hat. Your, your hat? But I'm bareheaded. I didn't wear my hat. I hung it up over there on the branch of that tree. A bullseye, Carl. It would have torn my head off. How did you come to hang your hat on the branch? How did you come to shoot? There was a movement in the bush and then a shadow dropping its spot. A deer, I thought of. Steve. Steve, what is this? Come out in the open. If I had, I'd be dead. and palm it off with an accident for 500 yards in the bush. It could be a tragic mistake. The coroner wouldn't even look at you cross-eyed. I no. hung my hat on that branch to bait you to catch you red-handed and as naked as sin. You actually believe I... I took you up here to... to murder you! I know it. If you thought that, why did you come? To watch my murder, to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> to see you make the kill and lose it. <laughs> to see that cat smile freeze on your mouth. The way it's freezing now. Jesus. Oh, man. Goodbye, Carl. Let's try it again some other time. Some other time, Carl. <laughs> was mine. Two deaths, Stella and Carl. And a perfect alibi for the engineer. A perfect alibi so that I would live and tend their grave. Get three fives. Get the tape. By State Express. Get the taste of international success. The taste of uniquely three five. Only when no expense is spared in its making can a cigarette taste so right, so smooth, so satisfying. Three five. Get the taste. The taste that State Express created for you. The taste that has made three five. The king size cigarette of international success. Get three five. Get the face. And now, let's return to tonight's terrible tale. You wouldn't think.
think a pair of crossed wires could produce such a double cross. Foolish Steve, to think that there is such a thing as a perfect alibi. She's so intent on telephoning. United Airlines, I want to reserve a flight ticket to Glasgow. Tonight's plane. It's got to be seven tonight. I've got urgent business. Ah, oh, good. Steve Barrett, 27 Sam Street, Kensington. Flight 11. Thank you. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. Um, how long to Glasgow? Uh, the plane lands at 10 p.m. Good. Uh, thanks again. Number two was an airport ticket office. Another airport, a competing airline, the Bristow Airline. But I wasn't Steve Barrett at this airport ticket office. A prop moustache, face puffed out with wads of cotton stuck between my gums and cheeks. Wax pencil lines raised the face and changes. <laughs> oh, the amateur theatrical paying off. Yes, sir. Uh, a ticket for Glasgow, please. Uh, for the 8 p.m. flight to tonight. One will, please. Yes, sir. Take away the ball. Flight 76. Your name is it? Sam. Sam Talbot. I live at Guildford in Surrey. What time do we land? The plane lands at 11 p.m. on ship. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, Stop at number three was the Black Arrow Cafe to talk a man into hiring out for a job. All right. I'll do it. Give me that three million. Uh, you'll get on a United Airlines train for Glasgow tonight, promptly at seven. You're me, Steve Barrett. On the train, you mind your own business, attract no more attention than necessary. Go to sleep with a newspaper on your face. What do I do? On that? landing at 10 p.m., you telephone this telegram to my wife. Tell us, Mr. Ryan's best go to the newspaper job. Yes, and so on and so on. Phone it in promptly as close to 10 p.m. as you can. And then lose yourself, take a train somewhere. And then. When you've murdered your wife and you're in the clear with a perfect alibi, what's my kind of the insurance? <laughs> oh, quit rolling your eyes, Governor. Your scheme is now to work out, you know. Oh, I... I'd forgotten that the other two was in... Oh, yes, I'm sure you forgot. I'd forgotten that the other two... It wasn't that unit aid. <clears throat> you know your instructions. Oh, yeah, I know something else, too. Something else? This perfect murder's been a long time, it seems. That's why you made inquiries about me. Well, of course. You've been weeks trying to find a spit bloke like me. All right, Governor. I'm your boy now. But you're my boy, too. So long, Governor. I'll be reading about you in the newspapers. Had the perfect murder for Stella's insurance been a long time hatching with me? Had McCabe, a perfect stranger, reached deeper into my mind than I, Dad, and... and but Stella and Carl had crossed wires only one week ago. My motive to kill, my reason for revenge was only one week old. I was in Carl's apartment at 6 p.m. sharp waiting for him. We shared rooms once before my marriage to tell her. I knew Carl had it home at 6 to shave before dinner out and his evening conversation. that I'm not using a rifle. You're here to murder me? No, I'm going to murder Stella. Through you, Steve. Get hold of you. No consultation, Doctor. I owe you too much already. Do just as I say. As you say, Steve. Please drink it. Hmm. A lipstick, initial cigarette case, lace handkerchief, uh, mementos left by Stella in her rendezvous here with you. Scatter them about the room, Carl. Oh, one in a 
dressing table drawer. One carelessly here, one there. Steve, see, you're mistaken. Believe me. Gather them, Carl. Good. Now there on the table. Ah, the pencil and paper. Your personal stationery. Now write as I dictate and write in a scrawl, Carl, no penmanship. Ready now? Ready. Stella Barrett shot me. We quarrel. I wanted to end our affair. That's all, Carl. Drop your pencil. Stella shot you and left. But you weren't dead or not at once. A breath of life was left. Just enough to name your murderer. Steve, Steve, I said there was, there was nothing between your wife and me. Only concern for you. Concern enough to plot to murder me. Steve, it's only in your mind. Some morbid idea that but you... I overheard. You... You overheard? Your telephone talk with Stella a week ago. Mm. <laughs> you got your wires crossed. <laughs> I was on that line calling home. I dialed home and heard myself sentenced to death. Steve, there never was such a telephone call. The night you met Stella at the Cafe Creole. Mm. You've forgotten, Carl. I've never been in a Cafe Creole, not once in my life. It, it's just something you've invented. You just put it out of the ether. It, it won't work, Carl. You, you can't mix me up. Steve. Steve. I'm trying to hang on to what I know. It, it's a minute after six, Carl. I'm here murdering you, but at the moment I'm in a plane 10,000 feet in the air flying to Glasgow. That's what I know. All I want to know. Oh. Uh, you have Stella all to yourself. When she's hanging, you're murdered. Don't sleep no more. No more. <laughs> Carl's arm against the floor where he'd fallen to break his wristwatch, fix the time of his death at two minutes past six. I was on a plane to Glasgow as alias Sam Talbot of Guildford Surrey at 8 p.m. sharp. <laughs> Sam Talbot was a man with a moustache and a patchy face, no resemblance to me. My crime had the finesse that makes murder an art of bungling. Two deaths, Carl and Stella, and a perfect alibi the engineer. A perfect alibi so that I could live. A night's sleep with my name on a Glasgow hotel register, then a routine application for the newspaper job to cover my trip, and I was back in London late afternoon the next day. The city was full of the sensational arrest of Stella Bass. was caught in the toils. Murder and the supreme penalty. Her death was only a question of time now. Only time. Later, I saw Stella by the mission of the authorities. We sat in a stone room. This time it was different. I was her executioner now. But her eyes on me were... were eyes of pity. You've been clever, Steve. They'll convict me and put me to death, I know. But I don't care. I want it to be like that. You, you want it to be like that, you say? I'll die and be dead to pain. If you live and lie to pain, I wouldn't have it any other way. You're getting what, what you deserve to be. You must think that because you're insane, Steve. Huh? I never realized how insane. I must think what I know to be so. You know only what your insanity invents. I'm sorry for you. Huh? You're sorry for me? <laughs> You're sorry for me? <laughs> words and tricks, tricks with words. Stella was trying to unnerve me, steal my victory by making me suspect my own motives suspect my sanity as Carl tried to do an act and I wasn't fooled. Tell her was an actress the same actress she was when I married her. The public prosecutor was the final ordeal. 
another attempt to steal my victory. Now, this perfect alibi, Barrett. You really think you're going to put it across? I was in Glasgow when Carl Stanley was murdered. I cabled my wife. Oh, we know all that. We also know that you murdered Carl Stanley in a scheme to implicate your wife. I was in Glasgow. I left at 7 p.m. before the murder of Carl Stanley. I was 10,000 feet in the air when Carl Stanley was murdered. I arrived in Glasgow at 10 p.m. I immediately wired my wife. A very good memory, Barrett, but it won't save you. Do what you like to me. Question me. Use every trick you can, but my alibi stands. I was in Glasgow. I left at 7 p.m. before the murder of Carl Stanley. I was 10,000 feet in the air. All right, all right. Supposing I was to tell you something even odder than that. Tell me what? You're right here now, reciting your perfect alibi. You're not here. You're dead. You died yesterday. I died yesterday? Uh, Yesterday's 7 p.m. flight to Glasgow on United Airlines, uh, flight 11, was never completed. The plane crashed. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.